Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, forced air incubators versus still air incubators. I have received a few questions recently on the Facebook group page and a couple questions here on the uh, YouTube channel uh, regarding this. And they basically just wanted to know what the difference was, uh, which one's better, and how much more it's gonna cost for the, say the forced air versus the uh, still air. Okay, basically the difference between the two incubators is the uh, forced air incubator has a fan mounted inside near the heating element, which helps to circulate the air and keep your temperatures a little more uniform throughout the incubator. Uh, the still air incubator um, has a heating element, which is usually mounted near the top of the incubator and uh, uses a process known as stratification uh, to heat the air. Basically what that is, stratification is basically just layers of different temperature air. Obviously the top layer of air is gonna be warmer than the middle layer of air, and the middle layer of air is gonna be warmer than the bottom layer of air. Uh, which is why it's so important to make sure that you keep your sensor probe mounted so it's hanging at the height of the eggs, near the top of the eggs. Um, so that once your incubator stabilizes, the air that the uh, eggs are positioned in is the correct temperature for them to hatch in. Um, the one downside to a still air incubator is they tend to have um, warm and cool spots in them. Usually your four corners will be a little bit cooler than the general cent centralized area of the incubator. Um, they are a little bit more inexpensive than a forced air incubator. Um, and I've had good luck with them. I mean, I've used this one here for a couple years as a, uh, a lockdown incubator and it's worked just fine. I've had hatch rates up in the 80s and 90%. Um, the nice thing about them is you can actually modify them. And I'm gonna show towards the end of this video how I modified this one to be a forced air incubator. Um, and basically it's just by mounting a fan inside that heating element. But we'll show you that uh, when we get towards the end of this video. Um, another good thing about the still air incubator is that it actually holds humidity better than a forced air incubator. Uh, because the air is not moving around, the humidity isn't evaporating as fast out of the air as it would in a uh, forced air incubator. Um, a forced air incubator, is gonna have a fan which is mounted up near your uh, heating element. And what that's doing is blowing air around the incubator and it's moving that warm air um, throughout the incubator, helping to stabilize the temperatures all throughout the incubator. Um, they are a little bit more expensive. Um, they will also help to dry your chicks faster once they hatch because you have that air movement of the fan it actually helps the chicks dry out a little bit faster. But on the downside, um, the humidity will also dry out faster. So you may have to add water uh, to this forced air incubator more often than you would say if you were using a still air incubator. So um, that's pretty much it. Even on these uh, small models like this Genoel 12, um, it's got the heating element mounted in the lid and it's actually got a big five inch fan uh, mounted up near that uh, heating element uh, to help move that air around. So um, basically I want to talk about how I modified this one to be a forced air incubator and how I mounted the fan. Um, basically all you have to do, you have two screws on the top of this style incubator and this is a little giant incubator by the way. Um, another incubator that is uh, very similar in design is the Hovavator model. Um, but basically you take these two top screws out and that's going to release your uh, heating element. And then on the heating element you have four more screws uh, that you can pull out and lift the top off. And inside uh, near the heating element there are going to be four standoffs and you can just throw those away. You're not going to need them anymore. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your fan and you're going to mount it in place of where those uh, four standoffs were. I found that it's easiest to take a piece of uh, string 
and tie your fan to this uh, top piece. Uh, that'll just kind of help hold it in place while you're, while you're mounting it. Um, basically, you, once you set the fan in there, you want to make sure that your wires are going through the uh, grommet hole that your power supply wires are going through. And uh, just set your, the unit in there. And what you're going to have to do is start a couple screws once you've got them started. Then you're going to have to go around and uh, adjust these little standoffs that help to hold the wires that wrap around the, uh, the unit itself. And those wires are basically just a, uh, a heating element uh, that once you apply power to it, the wires get warm and, uh, and it heats the, uh, the incubator up. But once you've got uh, all the standoffs in place, then you can add, uh, or then you can uh, place the remaining screws in and screw it down tight. And then kind of just go around the, uh, the incubator, or not the incubator, but the uh, uh, heating element. And just make sure that your wires are all evenly spaced. All your standoffs are in place and in their holes. Uh, and then you can set down, or then you can tighten down all your screws. Uh, once you've got that done, uh, you can take the uh, heating element, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, fan power wire, and there is a plug on the circuit board that you can just plug this fan into. Now this fan um, I purchased off of eBay. It cost me $4 uh, with free shipping. And uh, so the, in the incubator, I've got uh, $50 wrapped up in buying the incubator and under less than five dollars in a fan so for fifty five dollars i'm getting a four stair incubator and the exact same model if you were to purchase it online it would be upwards of a hundred bucks so if you're handy um you can uh, modify a still air incubator into a four stair incubator and uh, save you a few bucks that way um, as far as uh, fan direction um, it doesn't matter which direction you point or you mount this fan in uh, the air can either blow straight down out of the incubator or the way I did it, I turned it around. I am sucking air up into the heating element and it's blowing it out the sides of the, of the uh, heating element. So, guys, I hope that gave you a little bit better idea on the differences between the forced air incubators and the still air incubators and uh, how you can modify a still air incubator to be a forced air incubator. Um, if you do have this type of incubator, uh, during the first 14 days, you can actually set a fan in there. You can just set it on the side just to kind of help move that air around a little bit. But you want to make sure that when you go into lockdown, uh, you take that fan out because once the chicks hatch, you don't want them to be able to get near that fan. So. Again, guys, I hope this video helped out a little bit and gave you a little better understanding of the differences between the forced air and the still air incubators. And uh, that kind of helps you decide which uh, type of incubator you want to go for uh, when you start incubating your eggs or when you purchase an incubator. So, guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you'll get notified of any new and upcoming videos. So thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.